A few people have asked for an overview or a walk around of the car that all these detailed videos have been about so that you sort of have a, a context of, of what we're talking about because those detailed ones takes us a little while to edit so they're you know sort of two or three months old. Uh, I'm here in the workshop uh, where we turn a lot of old Land Rovers into electric vehicles of all vintages uh, but particularly just wanted to take you quickly through some of the features of this Series 3. Just ignore the overtired dog named Frida. Uh, there on the floor. But here we've got a 1973 Land Rover, um, custom grill by us, Nava headlights, so all LED lighting all around. Um, I hope, you know, all the 12 volt wiring system has changed. Uh, if I lift this up, so you can see underneath we've got uh, just sort of a junction box there on the top and underneath that is, is the front battery pack. We've got the 12 volt system, which is running a, a PDM, so digital uh, system rather than fuses and relays, few, few high current fuses in there. Uh, custom radiator behind the grill uh, in there, running coolant for the motor controller that you can sort of see the cover for way up the back. Uh, brake system from a later, later series that's uh, running an electric brake booster to give the booster pressure. And then we're running drums, uh, drum brakes all around, but with the regen, it's, it's really nice. The real fun stuff is in the cab. Uh, so this is all a custom dashboard by us, machined uh, plate work across there. And then this lower, lower section that houses a lot of the EV controls down here. The, the car's on, I guess, accessory in the key right now, but if I turn it on, um, you can hear the vacuum pump for the brake system starting up, pressurizing that brake system. That'll go on for a little bit. There's an there's a expansion tank as well for that. Um, with, with the gauges on, you can see we've got a, you know, a motor temperature, which is actually measuring the controller temperature. That's the important one, but it, ostensibly the motor. Um, fuel, battery, battery level, uh, speedo. So that's all a you know, modern pulse driven speedo. Completely rewired again. We've got the cabin lights on, so it's a bit brighter in here. I've got a few drive modes in here, if you can see the, the graphics on there. So there's sort of an off-road mode, uh, which has like a much higher regen, a softer throttle response, uh, our standard that it always, the car always starts up in, and a, and a sort of more sporty mode, which is a bit more responsive and has less uh, reduction. Just a little feature down here that you can't really see, or that light's a bit bright, is um, there is a master, um, uh, like an emergency stop, which cuts power to the high voltage system in there. Uh, that, that allows you, it's sort of Australian law that we've got to do that. Of course, the key does that too. But what that does do is, is enables you to turn the traction pack off. So the, the electric motor, the battery system, the whole high voltage system will turn off, but the 12 volt system will remain on, which the key of course wouldn't do. So having the 12 volt system on, hey Frida, having the 12 volt system on means that you still have brakes and power steering, um, headlights, all that kind of stuff that you'd want. There's an electric power steering behind here with uh, adjustment setting here. We've got a later Defender throttle because we needed a digital throttle. You don't like me making videos, do you? I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, got a rear tub here with, with seats out at the moment, but usually this is configured with bench seats in the rear. Exmoor trim, canvas hood, um, custom little joint badge. In Victoria here uh, in Australia, we've got to put these EV uh, labels on our number plates, and there's a different one for hybrid. Um, custom badge from Fallon nameplates in the UK, who do this as a stock item now, which is cool. So thanks to Electric Classic Cars for making that a stock item. Uh, battery packs under the car here, as you can see, is like a tank pack, and uh, up in the, the sides up in here, and of course in the front. That's a total of 42 kilowatt hours of battery, which probably getting close to 200 kilometers of, of range in a garden shed shaped vehicle like this. All the cabling that we use is running inside um, Flexicon, which is the brand, but it's really a steel core cabling. So the only way to kind of get through that is, a, is an angle grinder. So something a little bit stronger than sort of, um, you know, corrugated conduit or something like that, which on an off-road vehicle you, you want. Um, oh, of course, these cute touches, like there's the charge port. And uh, yeah, that's it. Parked in a parked in just the driveway as we pack up for a Friday, but a very fun car to drive.